so we can shoot and we're just reducing the numbers down gradually. We can hold the charge button down, we can let go and we can take a big chunk and then we go back to shooting small numbers again. So it's only going to affect the amount of charge based on that one variable. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And before we continue with the video, just a massive thank you and a shout out to my wonderful Patreon and YouTube channel members. FoozleCC, Amari Lewis, Rob, Matt, Zan, Julian Cruz, Seth Grobel, Enmark Games, Fan Van, Mood for Sal, Retro Galaxy, Martin K, Olivia Bernier, Tor Alex Anderson, Lighting Cat, Gerald Dumont and Yanni Boy. For more information about what's on offer on the Patreon, there's a link in the description. Hey guys, welcome back to another Construct 3 tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a chargeback mechanic for shooting an arrow at an enemy. And then the damage applied to the enemy will be based on how much charge was on the arrow to begin with. This will be useful in any kind of platform or top-down game where you want to assign damage based on a power gauge. First thing we need to do is create a projectile. At the moment, I've just got two sprites, a player and an enemy. They have no behaviors. There is no events. And I just have a platform which has the solid behavior. Double click, add a sprite. I'm going to make it one pixel by one pixel. You can make yours whatever size you want. I'm just going to make it white. And that is going to be my projectile. I'm just going to pop it off the side there. I'm going to give it a name called Bullet. I'm going to give the bullet the bullet behavior. And now we need to add a line of code. We're going to say on a, uh, add event on keyboard, on key pressed, and we're going to use the space bar. When we press the space bar, we're going to want the character to spawn that bullet. So we can say spawn another object. We're going to select the bullet on player zero, image point zero, because I only have one layer. Uh, because my layer is called background, I need to rename layer background. Uh, just make sure the image points in the middle. I had the image point at the bottom, which was spawning the bullet in at the bottom, and it was being uh, covered up by the background. So with the image point in the middle, we can now shoot when we push the space bar as many bullets as we like. Now we need to add in a charge back. Now we're going to do that by holding down the space bar. So if we press the space bar, we want the bullet to fire. If we're holding down the space bar, we want the bullet to charge up and a power gauge to appear. So let's add another event, say keyboard is key down and we're going to choose the space bar again. And now we need to add a global variable to the game to control that charge back. So add a global variable, we're going to call this one charge. It's going to be a number and we're going to leave it at zero. So if spacebar is down, then we're going to have a sub event and we're going to say system. And we're going to say every tick and we're going to say system and we're going to add to that charge 0.1. Because don't forget every tick means every frame and there could well be 60 frames in each second. So we don't want it to charge up really, really fast. So we're going to say 0.1. Now let's add a power bar to be able to control what that looks like visually. So double click, tile background. I'm going to set the width to one. And I'm going to set the height to eight. And I'm going to just make this white. You can color yours however you like. And I'm going to just drag it down to like one square. My grid is eight by eight. I'm just going to pop this one at the top here. And I'm going to call this one charge bar. Now I'm going to add an event and say system every tick. And now every frame of the game, I want the charge bar, which is. Ch I want the charge bar to set its width to the charge variable. So if the charge variable is zero, then the width of this will be nothing. Now I can drag this right out. And now when I play the game, it's going to look like it's not there because that charge variable is not there. But if I hold down the space bar, it now starts to charge up. Obviously I've shot because I pressed the space bar, but the charging variable is now active. 
I let go, it stops charging. So that's going to allow us to now add a variable charge to the shot power of the projectile. Next thing we need to do is add a timer behavior to the player. Now the timer is going to be acting as a cooldown. So we're only going to be able to press the space bar when the timer is not running. So we're going to on the first instance of on keyboard space press, we're going to add an action and we're going to say player and we're going to start that timer. We're going to start it once and we're going to call it cooldown. Now we're going to add a condition to the space press by pushing C on the keyboard. We're going to go back to the player and we're going to say is timer running and we're going to reference that timer cooldown that we just said on here. Now I'm going to invert this by pushing I on the keyboard and now this statement says if we press if we press the space bar and the timer is not running then we can shoot a bullet but when we shoot the bullet we start the timer running which means it's only going to allow me to shoot a bullet once every one second. Now I can change this to 0.5 which I think will be better, which means now it's only going to allow me to shoot a bullet once every five se 0.5 seconds. No matter how many times I press it, I can only shoot once every half second. Now we're going to need to add an action that says on space bar released, we can shoot another bullet, but we're going to assign the power to the power gauge variable, which will then affect how much damage the enemy is going to take. So if we're going to be dealing damage to the enemy, we're going to need to give the enemy a health bar. So let's go ahead and double click. Let's add another tile background. I'm also going to give this a width of one pixel and a height of eight, but I'm also going to color this one red. So it is the same as the enemy. I'm going to pop it over here underneath our charge bar and make it the same width. And I'm going to go back and now I'm going to add another global variable which says enemy HP and I'm going to set that to 100. Now I'm going to go to my every tick command and I'm going to say tile background 2 which is the enemy's HP. I'm going to set the width of that to the enemy HP. So now the width of this enemy HP bar will be 100. So if I change this now to 100 that's exactly how it's going to be now i can make this the entire width of the game again but it's always going to just set it to 100. now add an event and we're going to say bullet and we're going to say on collision with another object and that's going to be the enemy the first thing we're going to want to do is destroy the bullet so we're going to add an action that says bullet destroy and now we're going to have to add in how much damage the enemy is going to take. So to do that, we're going to say system and we're going to say subtract from enemy HP. And the standard amount of damage that we're going to take if we're not charging is going to be one. So we're going to say one and then we're going to say plus And we're going to say charge. So it's going to be one plus whatever the charge is. Now, we're going to only start the charge if the cooldown timer is not running, which means that we've had our initial shot and then the, then, the, then the charge can take effect. So now if I start shooting him, you can see that the HP bar is going down. But if I hold down and I start building up the charge and then I let go, nothing happens because we haven't told the system to fire a bullet. So let's go back in and we're going to go in and say keyboard. And now we're going to say on key released. And that key is going to be spacebar. On key released, we are now going to spawn in another bullet. So we can just copy this line of code down. And that will then shoot a bullet. We don't need to add anything else because we've got bullet on, or we've got overlapping enemy. We're going to change that to collision with enemy. We don't need to add anything else because we've got the bullet colliding with the enemy and that's always going to add in the subtract one plus the charge. So now when I play the game, I can shoot the enemy. But if I charge up the bullet, then let go, it takes away a much larger chunk. However, you can see that when I continue to shoot the enemy, it continues to apply that previous charge. So in order to change that, we're going to need to add in a another global variable. This one's going to be called previous charge. It's 
going to be a number. Now, when we release the space bar, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to system and set the value of charge back to zero so that every time we hold down the space bar, we're starting again from zero rather than starting from the previous amount of charge we had. And that's going to stop the bullets taking away all that additional enemy uh, energy every time they hit the enemy. Now add another action and say system and we're going to set the value of previous charge and we're going to set that to charge. So whatever the charge is at the time, drag that to the top because that's the first thing we want to happen. We're going to say when we release the space bar, transfer the charge. So whatever the charge amount is to previous charge. So we remember it, reset the charge and then spawn the bullet. Now, when the bullet collides with the enemy, instead of saying plus charge, we can say plus previous charge, and that number then won't be affected, but it will change every time we play, uh, every time we shoot a bullet. So we can shoot, and we're just reducing the numbers down gradually. We can hold the charge button down, we can let go, and we can take a big chunk, and then we go back to shooting small numbers again. So it's only going to affect the amount of charge based on that one variable. And you can obviously play around with the numbers, and you can change the speed from 0.1 to whatever you want it to be, based on how quickly you want the enemy to charge up its weapon. And then that weapon charge will automatically be added on to the amount of damage the bullet takes.